everybody. We are back from the holidays. I'm Benna Dortch and I'm here with Ken Reed and we're really excited. It's crunch time here at System Improvements in just a little bit over a month. Our Global Taproot Summit will be coming to Knoxville, Tennessee and we are so excited. So what we're going to do is uh, tell you about the asset optimization track uh, today. So that, yeah, this is our uh, basically our equipment track for those that aren't familiar with the uh, you know equipment optimization. We're talking about our, our equipment track. Uh, so for the maintenance guys and things like that would be the ones that we're looking at there. So um, so yeah, we're pretty excited about talking about this. We have several different tracks uh, during the summit, and we're going to be concentrating. Obviously, on the best one, the uh, Absolutely. asset the optimization one track here. That so you're in charge of. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. So. All right. So the people who come to your track, Ken. Yeah. So basically, this would be uh, really set up for um, those uh, your equipment maintenance people and your equipment reliability guys that would be coming in. Um, but also, I don't want to uh, hold off on those that may be just interested um, that do. Safety and uh, safety and uh, EHS kind of investigations, just kind of seeing what kinds of things you can investigate uh, during your normal investigation. So uh, when you, whenever an equipment problem shows up, uh, this is the kinds of things that you'd work on. So. And you've got a pre-summit course. That's right. We have a, an Equifactor pre-summit course. It's a two-day pre-summit course that gives you some great ideas on uh, on how to use specifically how to use Equifactor, um, but really talks about equipment troubleshooting in general. It's a really good uh, two-day course for the pre-summit course. Yeah. Now, normally for the Equifactor course, you need to have gone to a two or a five-day taproot course. So is that the situation here? No. For this, uh, it doesn't matter if you've gone to a taproot course or not. Anybody can go to this two-day pre-summit course. And obviously, if the asset optimization track the whole track for this on Wednesday Thursday Friday anybody can go to that so, awesome yeah I like that it makes it efficient it makes it efficient <laughs> and easy to do so. efficient and easy to do <laughs> all right well you really uh, just in case uh, you know we're celebrating the 30th anniversary this year we're gonna be here in Knoxville Tennessee yeah. it's February 26th and 27th are the pre-summit courses and then March 1st and 2nd and third, third. <laughs> <laughs> it will be the summit itself. So we are looking forward to seeing you all here. Since we got back from the holidays, a lot of people have really started registering. And it's so fun to get to see who all we're going to get to see back here this this next year. Yeah, we so. kind of check every day to see. I oh, know who's some coming. Of our, some of our, new, <laughs> our friends have all uh, got back on, some of our Taproot family. So it's great. And then we look at who, who get, we get to meet new this year. So yeah. um, it, it's such a great event. So you don't want to miss it. Um, the summit courses, Ken, you've really got some good lineups uh, for the breakout sessions. Yeah, we have some really good. So the summit has some, uh, just so, so you know, our format, you've got uh, the keynote speakers that are uh, spaced throughout the the summit, uh, you know, usually at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, we have a keynote speaker. And then in between, we have several breakout sessions. And you can uh, break up your summit experience into different tracks to kind of focus on those different breakout sessions. And I'm going to talk about the break breakout sessions that are uh, associated with um, with the asset optimization track specifically. So, Well, you've got uh, you and uh, Chris, Va I mean, Chris Valley and Brian Tink. That's right. Uh, what's that first session about multiple failures without uh, learning? Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how many times we see people come up and they say, yeah, you know, uh, this piece of equipment broke. Yeah, it's broke again. You know, <laughs> let's, let's go fix it. Yeah. And they go fix it. And then amazingly enough, six months later, it's broke again. And uh, it seems like one of those things that's obviously not a good idea, and yet we do it all the time. So uh, Chris and Brian are going to take a, a kind of a journey and give us some examples of how people have gone in and, and found issues, kind of thought they fixed the issues, and yet continuously seem to have the same problems over and over again. Learning so, from our mistakes. Learning from our mistakes. Kind of an important thing to do so we can stop yeah. these things from happening. So, so they're going to give some examples that they've seen in their, uh, in their experience of this happening and some good and some bad examples of that. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, improving maintenance troubleshooting with Equifactor equipment. Who's doing that one? That's an awesome, <laughs> awesome breakout <laughs> session. Oh, that's me. Oh, uh, that's yeah, fun. I'm doing that one. Um, I'm going to give you a... Um, a little bit of uh, insight into how to use Equifactor. And uh, for those that aren't familiar with Equifactor, that's our equipment troubleshooting module. And uh, it gives you um, some troubleshooting tables and some methodologies to use to find the, what I call the physical cause of the problem of an equipment issue. Yeah. Uh, and then plug that back into the taproot process. And uh, I'm gonna show you in our new software, the Taproot 6 uh, software service, uh, how the new Equifactor soft, uh, software works, and it's it's really cool. 
Um, it's really easy to use now, and uh, it's much more integrated into the rest of the taproot process now. So, well, that's cool. Uh, we get to see that some of the software in the course. That's great. Yeah, um, yeah. it's really, really nice. Uh, Kevin McManus, uh, this one is a, seems like it's going to be a popular session, The Psychology of Failing Fixes. Yeah, he's going to kind of talk a little bit about why do we continue to do this. Not just, you know, Brian and, and Chris are going to be concentrating more on on the outcomes, you know, the final right. issues about why that's a bad idea. But uh, Chris is really going to look a little bit deeper about why do we do this? Why do we keep doing this Kevin. to ourselves? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Kevin, sorry, uh, Kevin uh, McManus. He's going to he's going to kind of look at uh, why do we keep doing this to ourselves, and and uh, what are some of the traps and pitfalls that maybe we can avoid. So that when we go into an equipment problem like this, we we recognize that we need to fix it the right way. It's so important. It really I mean, is. We talk about um, you know everything from being proactive so things don't happen. Okay, what to do when things do happen, and then right. let's let's make sure they don't happen again. Okay. So and learn from. Those but we seem to miss that for equipment issues yeah. for some reason. I don't know what it is. Um, when when somebody makes a mistake, we try try to obviously think about how do we prevent that person from making that mistake again. Right. But when equipment breaks, we say, yes, go fix it. And yeah. uh, and, and Kevin's going to look a little deeper about why do we do this and maybe we can avoid doing it in the future. He's great. He'll, yeah, he's awesome. It'll, it'll be a great session. He has um, a lot of energy, uh, so it's, it's good yeah, to see he Kevin's does. energy. Kevin, who Kevin. just ran like how many marathons at Disney World? <laughs> like right. three, I think, in, in the week cold, or something. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's special. Yep. Um, <laughs> the, in a good um, way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Hans Block is always popular. Um, the business end of, re of equipment reliability. This is a two-part session. It is. Yeah. It's uh, Heinz is. Uh, um, it's just an amazing uh, uh, opportunity to see somebody who has this much industry experience mm -hmm. um, and who has uh, uh, really lived his life with equipment reliability and equipment troubleshooting and understanding. Um, the importance of why you want, as a business, why do you want to fix this stuff? Why, why do we as companies um, think it's okay not to fix these things? Um, and he's going to sh give you some examples of why it's a good idea to fix this stuff and uh, fix he's, it right. He's very popular. People really enjoy just getting to speak to him themselves while they're at the summit. Um, we end up yeah. having a lot of people who we talk to afterwards, and they're like, I got to talk to Hans Block. Yeah. <laughs> so they really think that that's apparently just really cool it in the really equipment is. world. It so. is. When you have somebody who's written uh, as many books as Hines has written, yeah. um, and you've read all this, this cool stuff that Hines has talked about, um, actually having a chance to sit down with him and talk. And uh, I remember uh, the last summit at lunch, it was me and a, and a table full of people sitting down with Heinz and talking about things. And uh, it was really cool listening to Heinz talk about you know, the stuff that he's written about for many, many, many He's like years. an equipment troubleshooting star. He is. He's <laughs> awesome. For those that, know, that don't know Heinz, uh, it's, he's a treat to, to talk to. So. Um, also, there is minimizing downtime by minimizing repair time that Chris Valley is going to talk about. Yeah, so uh, we always talk about mean time between failures and and, uh, and things like that. And, and Chris is going to really concentrate a little bit on, on how to minimize uh, the, the amount of time it takes to fix these things and how downtime and is, is really influenced uh, by, by how we go about fixing the issues. And... Uh, um, while it sounds good to just go in and, and uh, do a quick repair and therefore we minimize downtime, yeah. um, seeing how, how those, uh, those short-term fixes sometimes lead to even longer-term yeah. uh, problems. Uh, downtime is expensive. It's cost. Yeah. You know, we always talk about how much is it going to cost to fix that piece of equipment. Well, well how much is it going to cost to have the plant down is, for half a day or a yeah, day exactly. or a week? Uh, that's, it's it's a drop in the bucket. Ex so. Exactly. And, I mean, these are great sessions. Um, so if you're in uh, equipment troubleshooting, you're a reliability person, um, these are you've spent a lot of time putting this track together and it, it looks like it's going to be great. It's mm -hmm. going to be also intertwined with some of our um, tracks that other uh, or other people, sessions that other people from other tracks will be in, which is great because you can really learn a lot from people from other sides of, of safety and improvement. And so 
like our best practice uh, session. That's uh, right. Users, Taproot users share best practice. That one's great. So that uh, session is going to be, uh, I've been it was talking about that, that session um, is going to have people not just from the a asset yeah. optimization track, but you'll see people from the investigation track and other tracks all there talking about their best best practices. For That's a great example. Yeah, and, and it's really good. And they can, I mean, you just learn from so many people and so much experience yeah. in that track. It's fabulous. Um, there's also our general sessions where you're going to get to listen to some amazing keynote speakers. Uh, Mark Paradise and I talked about that a few weeks ago, and we can have a link to that video if you want to hear more about our keynote speakers. And we always wind up with the uh, performance improvement gap analysis. Right, right. That is, an, that is what makes the Taproot Summit um, one of the key pieces of the summit that makes uh, this conference uh, so much more usable as compared to some yeah. other conferences I've been to. Um, I, I go to a lot of conferences and you walk away with this lofty thought kind of stuff. You know, oh, what are we going to do about this? And and you leave shaking your head, yeah, so we ought to fix that. But but no concrete yeah. ideas. And when you leave the Taproot Summit, this particular session um, allows so you to put together a checklist of things you're going to do when you get back to the office to fix stuff. So it's, it's really cool. And if you bring a team with you, um, or you know, even a, one other person, but sure. if you bring a team with you, this is a great time for you all to get together and determine what you're going to do when you get back to the office. We do offer dis uh, discounts for groups, so that's always a, a bonus. That is. Um, so you can check on that whenever you are um, registering, and registration is online, and it's online right now. You can't miss so it. So you, can, oh, you can go to taproot.com slash summit and register. You'll see the tracks. You can modify your track if you want to. Uh, say you're in Ken's asset optimization track and you want to learn something about software. You can go in and, and uh, change one of your sessions to one of the software sessions or an investigator session or something like that. There's just so many ways to modify this to make it a great experience for you. Right, it's all you can personalize it so it's exactly what you need to get out of the summit. So it's really good. All right, got anything else on this? I don't think so. I, I think we think covered so. the important stuff. Um, so. Feel free to comment. Uh, let us know you're out there. If you have any questions, contact us. You can email us at info at taproot.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, what else do we have? Twitter. Twitter. Pinterest, Pinterest now. now. We're on I, Pinterest. I know. We're on Pinterest now. Um, but otherwise, we'll be back here next Wednesday at noon Eastern time. We hope you join us then. Until next time, stay safe and have a good week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.